Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I got a special treat for you. I've set up hundreds of different Jira projects over the last six years, and I've learned a thing or two about how to set up your Jira correctly from the get-go. So if you're someone or know someone that has struggled to get their best foot forward, or maybe they're just frustrated with Jira because it's not working as advertised, this is the perfect video for you and or that person that you know. So make sure you share this video with them. Make sure you subscribe and encourage them to subscribe as well. And if you get any value out of this video, please make sure you like this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you want to carry the conversation and keep on going, let me know in the comment section below and we'll see what we can do. All right. I actually have a presentation for this. I wanted to make sure that I cover all the specific details and I'm going to show you basically how I onboard new Jira projects. All right, so this is the ultimate getting started guide. So again, if you have ever struggled or you feel frustrated that Jira is just not optimized or it's not working correctly, this is the guide for you because this is basically going to walk you through the things, the checklist that you should have gone through when you first set up Jira. All right, so the first thing we want to worry about is the projects. This is like the bread and butter of Jira. Everything works off of a project. So getting this first step correctly is super, super key. Now, what I don't have pictured here, but the most important thing is you do need to make a decision with respect to, are you going to go with a team managed project or a company managed project? And I will tell you this, having a team managed project is like having a Ferrari, but with that beautiful handcrafted engine taken out and you drop in a little Hyundai, little Honda, little Civic engine inside of there. You do not want to do this. Team managed projects really do handicap you. They limit you severely with respect to the features and functionality of Jira. Now, there's, it's not all bad news. Team managed projects are great for when users are completely new and they're very small teams, very small silos, and they don't, they're just kind of just using Jira to track work. But the second an organization goes full-blown agile and the second you start to scale agile, you will run into some severe limitations. It's really, really hard and very expensive to get out of. So don't make that mistake and learn and basically choose the right project type from the get-go. This will save you headaches down the road. The other thing is, what kind of project do you want? Because outside of team or company managed, you do have a lot of options. You can pick a software style, which is great for agile based teams. You can pick a work management, which is basically a Trello team coming into Jira. And then you can do service management, which is essentially an IT help desk. So there are different templates that you need to pick which one you're going to use. I will tell you that 90%, 95%, heck, I'll make it 99% of the teams that I work with are typically software based. If you're talking or thinking about Jira, it's a pretty high probability that you're talking software. All right, next, and this is really the most important question is how many projects? How do you architect your project? I've seen it all at this point. I've seen folks create a new project for every sprint. I've seen folks create a new project for every release. Heck, I've seen people create a project for every feature. And so when you don't know how to architect, how to create the right number of projects, it can get very overwhelming. So my recommendation is to do one of these three. You set up your projects by team, you set it up by project, and I'm talking about the entire life cycle of a project, not just like one-off releases. Like I'm talking about like maybe even a product. Okay. So you look at this project as project slash product where it's a long living multi-year. You're not talking about just like a three month release here. The other way to set it up is by department. So you want to have an internal discussion as to which one of these methods you want to do, because these are the healthiest ways of doing it. You can do whatever you want, but some ways will get you into more trouble than others. And these I find to be the most effective. Also, you want to have some naming convention to your projects. You don't just want to randomly call things random things because you want your projects to make sense. And so make sure you have some sort of a naming pattern or convention that makes sense to you. And then finally, make sure you categorize your projects, because if you're in a really, really big organization, you will, you may have two, three, 400 Jira projects 
and it can get very, very tricky to find things. And so it becomes difficult to manage. So make sure you're leveraging project categories. After that conversation, assuming that you went with the 99%, which is a software type, what kind of board do you want? This is where you are in an agile world because software projects are based off of agile, but you got to pick the template. You got to pick the template of your board and you get to pick between Scrum or Kanban. Those are your, you have a bug tracking type, but I've never once used that type. So you do need to pick, are we going to go Scrum or are we going to go Kanban? If you're going to go Scrum, this means that you are willing to go the whole way. You are going to be doing sprints, story points, estimates, burn downs. You're going to have a backlog. You're going to groom that backlog. You're going to have refinement sessions. You're going to be practicing. You're going to be going full scrum. And so this is the one that you want. However, if you don't feel like you're up to that challenge, if you don't feel like you're ready for that kind of rigor, Kanban is a great alternative. It's basically just a visualization of your work. You do have the option to add a backlog so that you can clean up your board a little bit and then kind of prioritize work into your backlog, prioritize work from your backlog into your board. So that option's there. And it's really, really great for folks that are just, again, not ready for the rigor of Scrum, but definitely want to be start implementing some agile best practices, but just not quite ready to commit. Now, you do need to make a decision here because once you pick one, you can't swap. You can't go from Scrum to Kanban or Kanban to Scrum. You will have to basically recreate your boards. Not a big deal breaker, but if you don't know what you're doing, it could be kind of difficult. After that conversation, now we got to talk workflows and or columns. So what are the statuses? What does your workflow look like? What does the life cycle of a story look like? Of a bug? Of an epic? Are they the same? Do all three need the same statuses? Or do you need different statuses for bugs versus stories versus work versus epics? And so I'm having those kind of conversations and then we're trying to map out what did the ideal workflows look like for either all the issue types or each issue type individually. Or we're talking restrictions as well. Do we need to restrict so that the transition can only be done by a certain individual? Do we need to make fields required upon a specific transition? And we're having these kind of conversations to figure out how data should flow through that workflow. We're also setting up conditions. We're checking to see if certain fields are, again, required. Should certain individuals be in a specific group? There's so many different conditions that you can add to your workflow and so many different restrictions that you can add to your workflow that I basically just show you what's available and you kind of tell me. But with that said, there is value in the KISS principle. There is value in keeping things as simple as possible because when you overwhelm your workflow, with all these restrictions and all these conditions and all these criteria that must be met, it basically makes JIRA a nightmare to maintain and an even bigger nightmare to use because now folks are going to circumvent JIRA because it's just too complex. So make sure that even though you have the option to do this, make sure there's business value, make sure there's logical value in doing these restrictions and conditions. Same thing goes here for transitions. Too many teams want to completely guide and completely restrict the way that issues flow. This is okay, but when you have 15 different statuses and you, you got a user that's in one status and then it hop over four statuses, you just created a really, really big red tape process blocker. And so again, value, there's so much value in the KISS principle. Make sure your transitions, your workflow, everything is simple. I will typically guide you and tell you to keep it as simple as possible and coach you through that process. After that, we're talking custom fields. What kind of information are we trying to capture? Out of the box, Jira has a great amount of fields, but you can add extra ones. You got your acceptance criteria, definition of done, definition of ready. You can capture t-shirt sizes. You can capture pretty much whatever you want. Steps to reproduce bugs, all those kind of things that are usually not built in to Jira, you can actually add extra fields. So what kind of information is important for you and your company and your team? And that's what I'm trying to figure out here with this one. Next up, we're looking at issue types. If you're a premium user of Jira, you can actually go above the Epic. So you can add initiatives, you can add themes. If you're not a premium user, you can still add other issue types like risks. You can add pretty much whatever you want at the base level with your stories and your tasks and your bugs. 
and you can capture other information that is eventually tied up to the epic. So these are the kind of conversations that I'm having to make sure that we're capturing the right data at the right level in the hierarchy. After that, we're talking about access. Who is going to be able to view the project? Who can create it, items in the project? Who can delete stuff? And then we go pretty much through everything else. There's about 20 to 25 different levers that you can pull in the permission schemes here. And so we're talking about all these kind of things to make sure that you are having the right level of access for maybe you have an external team that should only be able to view and create but not delete or they should be able to view and create but not edit. And so stuff like that, I hope you have those conversations there. And after that, that's pretty much it. So once you kind of have those conversations, then your Jira projects are set up better. Your Jira environment is in a healthier uh, position. And then Jira is not going to feel like such a drag. It's not going to feel like it's out of place. It's not going to feel like it's inadequate for your needs because you've had these very much needed conversations and thought about from a strategic standpoint, what's the best way. So anyways, hopefully this is helpful for you. If you are new and you're basically trying to get started, make sure you watch this. Make sure you share this with other folks that are in that similar position. If you are a seasoned veteran, but you're still feeling like you're, you're struggling, watch this video and reflect. Did you make those decisions? Can Do you have an area to improve? Because trust me, I, again, I've set up hundreds and hundreds of these projects. These are the key questions that I'm asking every team that I'm onboarding to make sure that their experience in Jira is top notch. Anyways, if you got value out of this and you made it this far, please make sure you subscribe. Drop a like if you got value. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.